Abiogenesis, The Origin of Life on Earth 101. Today, we learn how chemistry, time, and a little bit of luck combined to build the first cell. My name is Chris, and welcome to Animal Science TV. Luca, if you trace the tree of life all the way back to the beginning, every living thing on Earth relates to one common ancestor called Luca. The last universal cellular ancestor is the first form of life on Earth and the point where evolution begins. But how did this first living cell come to be? Scientists don't have an exact detailed answer to this question, but we do have a pretty good idea. Abiogenesis is the natural process by which life has arisen from non-living matter. Even a simple single-celled organism, like bacteria, is incredibly complex. Today's simplest life forms have undergone over 3.5 billion years of evolution, but our first cell is much simpler. The first life on Earth only has to fill the bare minimum of the definition of life. So what is life? There is no exact perfect definition, but I like this one. What is life? Living organisms have a self-sustaining metabolism that processes energy from outside of the body, adapt to the environment, and usually self-reproduce. By a self-sustaining metabolism, I mean performing a function like photosynthesis or eating to gain and process energy. By adapt to the environment, I mean that life can mutate and evolve. Life is driven by natural selection and evolves. And by usually self-reproduce, I mean that it can either clone itself asexually, like bacteria do, or reproduce sexually, as humans do. Either way, life should produce a new generation that looks quite similar to the parents. The reason that I say usually reproduce itself is because there are things like mules, which are a hybrid between a horse and a donkey, that are obviously alive, but they are sterile. Please leave a comment if you have a better definition of life. By this definition, a dog is alive, a mule is alive, a virus is alive, and a rock is not. There is an argument about whether viruses are alive or not because they need to hijack the host cell to reproduce. They can't reproduce by themselves, but I want a definition of life where viruses and mules are included as alive. Even with this basic definition of life, the odds of a cell forming from non-organic matter appears to be very, very slim. People compare the chances of abiogenesis happening to a tornado running through a junkyard and producing a space shuttle. The secret here is that life on Earth did not occur simply by random chance. Biochemists have a good understanding of how abiogenesis could have happened. With the correct chemical ingredients and a hospitable environment for complicated reactions, it was just a matter of time until life began. Primordial Soup Earth formed about 4.5 billion years ago, and by about 4 billion years ago, it had cooled enough to allow liquid water to collect in the oceans. The oceans were filled with what we call primordial soup. This is salt water containing dissolved carbon dioxide, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen. We know these chemicals were abundant on early Earth from geology and by studying meteorites and other young planets. Importantly, oxygen was non-present at this time. How could life come about from these primordial soup conditions? In 1952, the Miller-Urey experiment replicated the primordial soup conditions on Earth four billion years ago. These leading chemists created the same settings as the primordial soup in a lab apparatus. They put water with dissolved ammonia, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane into a flask. 
Heat and electricity were then applied to mimic hydrothermal vents, volcanoes, and lightning. After just one week, Miller and Yuri observed that the building blocks of life had formed. They had created amino acids. It was later discovered that the molecules used for the genetic alphabet, called nucleotides, could also be produced from the primordial soup. This is good evidence that DNA potentially could form spontaneously in conditions similar to early Earth. In the 1950s and 60s, Nobel Prize winners Watson, Crick, and Wilkins, along with other biochemists, discovered that DNA contained instructions for the development, functioning, growth, and reproduction of all known organisms. So our first cell probably needed DNA. Chemical evolution. The hypothesis of chemical evolution predicts that certain molecules can self-assemble into complex organized structures. Near geothermal vents on the ocean floor, in tide pools, or near volcanoes, there would have been enough heat and minerals to catalyze an almost limitless amount of chemical reactions. Given enough time in these conditions, very complex molecules could have formed. But some scientists think that double-stranded DNA spontaneously forming in the primordial soup is a far-fetched idea. So in 1962, the RNA world hypothesis was created. RNA is single-stranded and simpler to form than DNA is. It also performs more functions. It can store genetic information, self-replicate, and build proteins for metabolic pathways used to gain energy. In modern labs, scientists are able to create simple metabolic pathways similar to our complex Krebs cycle. So, biochemists have been able to demonstrate how all of the molecules needed for the origin of life could have formed spontaneously on early Earth. But we need all of these complex molecules concentrated in the same place, inside the cell membrane. Could this happen by chance? Maybe, but some chemical properties explain how getting all of the building blocks inside of a cell membrane could have been likely and not just a tornado in the junkyard coincidence. Cell Membranes An arrangement of phospholipids make up most cell membranes today, and chemists can also generate them by mimicking the primordial soup conditions. These phospholipids are basically polarized hydrocarbon chains with the head loving water and the tail hating water. Have you ever played with two magnets and felt the polar forces of them being pushed away or attracted to each other? It's based on which ends you put together. If you have thousands of these polar phospholipids, sometimes they'll snap together into a perfect sphere when you put them into water. The water-hating tails come together, the water-loving heads face outside and inside towards the water. The most stable arrangement for these molecules is actually to form a sphere where all of the heads are touching water, none of the tails are touching water, and the sides are all touching each other too. Quickly, I want to say thank you to my new Patreon, Lisa. Just $1 a month goes a long way and helps support me as I launch Animal Science TV full-time. The origin of life on Earth. So now we just need to get this RNA and the building blocks of life inside of the membrane before it closes. Interestingly, it is actually more likely for the cell membrane to snap closed when amino acids and RNA are nearby. They help stabilize the polar bonds of the membrane phospholipids. This event likely could not have happened in a high oxygen environment because oxygen is too reactive and breaks apart complex molecules. So that is what happened. The membrane closed with self-replicating RNA, 
nucleotides, proteins, and a basic metabolic pathway to create energy inside. It may have taken 300 million years, but eventually the primordial soup produced our first cell that satisfies all of the definitions of life. Can scientists explain how the first living cell could have occurred spontaneously from the primordial soup? Yes, we can. Fulfilling the definition, living organisms have a self-sustaining metabolism that processes energy from outside the body, adapt to the environment, and usually self-reproduce. Part one, a self-sustaining metabolism that processes energy from outside the body? Basic metabolic pathways can form spontaneously from amino acids, proteins, and RNA. A phospholipid membrane also could have closed at the correct time to contain all of these building blocks inside of its body. Check one. Part two, can our cell adapt to the environment? RNA can have a replication error rate as high as 0.1% per nucleotide. Therefore, the first cell's clones would not all be the same. So yes, it certainly can adapt and evolve now. Check two. Part three, can the first cell self-reproduce? RNA can self-replicate if the correct enzymes are present. Check three. Scientists don't know exactly what happened 3.5 billion years ago when life first emerged, but we do have a good hypothesis of how it could have happened. What happened? Life emerged from the inanimate world through a combination of chemical processes that can be explained by science. We have solid fossil evidence of life 3.5 billion years ago, and genetic analysis also converges on the same time in history. The RNA and DNA in all life forms, including viruses, are nearly identical. This confirms that all life on Earth came from a single first cell, the LUCA, or last universal cellular ancestor. The LUCA looked like a very dumbed down version of a modern bacteria. This spontaneous formation of life is probably the most important moment in the history of Earth. The chances. I want to know what the chances of life occurring are. If we look at the planets in our solar system alone, we have a sample size of three. Venus had liquid water and primordial soup for about two billion years, and Mars had it for about 300 million years. Earth only needed about 300 million years of primordial soup conditions before life occurred. I hope humans can explore these two nearby planets more closely. If we can find evidence that life occurred somewhere else in our own teeny solar system, we know the chances of aliens existing are almost 100%. With two examples of life emerging, we would know the chances of it occurring are much higher than a near 0%. If we could demonstrate the chance of life occurring in primordial soup conditions is just 1%, it would be groundbreaking. There are over 1 billion trillion stars in the observable universe. So if each solar system had a 1% chance of life occurring, there likely would be billions of alien life forms in the universe living today. Are we alone? Are humans special? I don't think so. This is one of science's greatest mysteries, and we might have an answer to it in our lifetimes. Hopefully, you now understand how life may have originated. Scientists don't know exactly what happened, and we can't put a number on the chances. 
The only thing we do know is that it did happen at least once here on Earth. The next animal science education video will be explaining how Luca evolved into the first animals, sponges and jellyfish. Check out this playlist up here for more 101 science education videos. I also make um, 10 cool animal fact videos and I do a live animal news show on Sundays, uh, usually. <laughs> um, thank you for watching Animal Science TV.